Hi there, and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. I'm your host, Sarah, and this week I have another dye experiment for you, although it's with commercial dye rather than natural dye. Um, I have mentioned this product on the channel before, and it's called Greener Shades. It's an eco-friendly dye, or more eco-friendly than some acid dyes on the market, because it does not use heavy metals, and so um, those things aren't in the product um, and potentially hazardous for the dyer, and they're also not going to be in the wastewater um, when you're finished dyeing. Um, and I'll put a link to where you can order um, the Greener Shades dye uh, in the show notes for this episode, and that's available below this video. Um, just so you know, I'm not sponsored by any of the products that I mention. Um, I think we've, we've said that before, but in case you're new, um, we don't take any kind of sponsorship. So these are things I've purchased on my own, and I do independent reviews of. Um, so let's get on to the dye process. Um, what I wanted to, I had a bunch of yarn in my stash, a lot of it ha uh, hand spun, and I just didn't like the color of it. Um, you know, color likes and dislikes are very personal, so I'm not going to say it was ba a bad color or an ugly color. It just wasn't to my taste, and it wasn't something I thought that if I knitted with it, that I would wear the result. Um, so I decided to over dye some yarn, and I actually decided to over dye a couple of different yarns, but I all I wanted all of them to kind of work together. Um, so what I decided to do was one dye bath with multiple yarns, and I got some interesting results. Um, so the the dye, the yarns that I started with two were commercial yarn, and one like I said was a hand spun. And they ranged in tone and shade. They were all in the brown family. Um, one of the commercial yarns was a light beige. Um, the other was uh, a dark brown with some flecks of pink and coral in it. And then uh, the third one was the hand spun that I mentioned. And that was a natural Shetland brown, kind of between cinnamon and chocolate in tone. Um, and and I knew I could over dye it, but I would have to go with a dark color. Um, typically, when you over dye, you have to go darker than whatever it is that you're over dyeing. So, with that in mind, I looked back at some yarns I had dyed previously, and I really like this deep red cherry kind of color uh, dark cherry, black cherry, black raspberry, something in that region. And so, because um, all of my yarns had a, a warm brown undertone, I thought that this um, warm red would be a good choice to over dye. So that's what I did. Um, I figured out how much yarn I had in total, and it was really more than I could uh, put into one dye pot. So I broke it up into lots, and I actually had three to do three um, dye lots of this, um, and then measured out the dye by weight for the depth of shade that I wanted. So um, you know, when we talk about natural dye, we might talk about a weight of goods to weight of dye product, um, either a weight of a weight of yarn to freshly harvested plants or a weight of yarn to dye extract. In this case, it's a little bit different because there's another variable in there, and that's depth of shade. It's how dark do you want the yarn to be? Um, how saturated do you want the color to be? So you might dye something, a light coral, a medium coral, or a dark co coral. They're all going to be exactly the same color. They're just going to be lighter and darker versions of it. And that's called depth of shade. So for this, I think I went with a 1% depth of shade, which doesn't sound like much. Um, but say a pastel is 0.2% depth of shade that gives you an idea. It's, it's five times more concentrated than a pastel, so it's going to be in the jewel tone um, kind of area. And again, this all depended on exactly how dark the original yarn was to start with. So let me show you some results. So here are the two yarns, the two good kind of either end of the spectrum. Um, the top one is the beige commercial yarn and then this one is the brown shetland and you can see this one almost has a burgundy kind of um, tone to it 
whereas this one is a, a little bit brighter raspberry. But that difference, both the darkness and the way the color looks in the end, really just has to do with how the, how the yarns differed in their starting point. So this was a great experiment for me. Um, I'm not actually going to use these yarns for what I thought I was going to use them for, and I'll talk about that in a future episode. Um, but that's okay. I'm still very pleased with the color. It's a color that, um, whether it's the light one or the dark one, I'm much more likely to use. Um, I also have some friends that I think would look really good in this color. So, you know, hey, if, <laughs> if you're a personal friend of mine, you might be getting a gift. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm overall very pleased. Now, I'll also put notes about how I use this particular dye product. Um, it's very important when you're using a commercial dye, um, unless you're going for a special effect like a mottled look or a speckle or something like that, you want to make sure your dye is really well prepared so that you get a nice even tone and you don't get splotchy yarn or unevenly dyed yarn. Um, so I will, I will uh, include detailed instructions on how I achieve um, an even an even effect or an even end result with those. But I'm fairly pleased. Um, there are a couple places, if you look through all the skeins, where you have a tiny fraction where it's ever so slightly lighter, ever so slightly darker. But for the most part, I would say this is one of the most consistent dye jobs I've managed. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, and yeah, I hope I hope that made sense. Um, I see a lot of people posting um, photos of yarns that they've overdyed with either um, overdying other colors or a lot of times um, a lot of people in my social media networks have their own sheep um, which have natural colors so they might be a shade of gray or a shade of brown um, or multiple different shades of different colors and it's so interesting to me the way all those different tones can give you a different result if you use the same color of dye on them. Um, and what I like about over dyeing either on gray or brown is that you can get some of these darker, um, richer colors without having to use a lot of dye. And um, so that's good on your budget, it's better for the environment, etc, etc. Um, but you can get a, a, a very nice look. Um, now I, I said before that you typically want to over dye darker than the yarn is. Um, and that's true for the most part, but what happens if you over dye lighter is that you can get a heathered effect. So if you mixed up a dye that was in the pastel range and you over dyed it on gray, you would get a heathery gray or, um, or a, a heathery version of whatever that color was, a heathery purple or a heathery yellow. Um, versus dyeing on pure white, you're gonna get a very bright um, pastel, almost a neon color, because that white yarn is going to amplify the color and um, make it appear much brighter to the eye, even, even though it's the same amount of dye, it's just a different background shade. So that's also another aspect of this to play around with, and I hope that in the future um, I can get some more good quality wool off of our sheep and show you some of those effects. But in the meantime, I encourage you to play around with it on your own. Um, you can either over dye commercial yarn that's already been dyed a particular color. Like this wasn't, um, this commercial yarn was, I said it was a beige, but it was not a natural beige. It had been dyed beige. So you can dye over something that's already been dyed, or you can just dye over a naturally occurring sheep color. Both will work really well. So do try that out. Let me know um, your results. As always, I'd love to see what other people are up to. Um, you can tag me on Instagram. So don't forget to share your projects. We'd love to see what you've been up to lately. Um, do stay tuned. We have a lot more planned. I might even have to do some extra episodes to fit everything in, um, depending on the timing of different projects. Um, there's new patterns coming out. There's all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot.